go now. All right. All right, fantastic. Welcome back. This right here is Why in the Morning. Many thanks for hanging up with us today. Being Entrepreneurship Tuesday, we are switching gears a little bit. We're going to talk about the current state of uh, the Kenyan media, especially this year for 2023. Which way forward? Of course, there's been a lot of changes in there, and there's a lot of changes that we need to embrace, especially when it comes to this year in terms of programming. And then we also had uh, the issue of uh, the accreditation of journalists. Uh, some of the press cards were being recalled, are being recalled. In fact, it's now a directive for all journalists to go and uh, extract or get the new press cards that have also a QR barcode to enable healthy journalism. And joining us live in this conversation, uh, he is uh, Director and also Media Training and Development at uh, Media Council of Kenya, Mr. Victor Buire. And just a brief introduction of him, he is the Director as well and Training Development at the Media Council of Kenya, like I said. And in addition, he provides strategic advice to the MCK on delivering on its constitutional mandate. He also oversees the media development initiatives at the Media Council of Kenya. He has over 20 years experience in journalism. Imagine that. Media training as well and management spanning a public, private and non-governmental sector. And lastly, he has also served as a task force member appointed by the cabinet secretary for ICT in reviewing the media policy for the country. He has also represented the council to UNESCO, an annual general meeting in Paris, as a member of the expert committee on communication and information under the Kenya National Commission on UNESCO. That is Mr. Victor Buire joining us live in studio. Pleasure. Good morning to you. Nice to meet you once again. Pleasure. Exactly. Welcome. Happy New Year as well. Happy New Year, Brian. <laughs> All right. Now let's get straight up into it. Uh, of course, you know, uh, recently we've had uh, the issue of being a uh, journalist being recalled to actually get accredited again. Of course, the new press cards. And I love the fact that you had a sample. It'll show us some of the features of it. Why is it necessary, especially this 2023, to have that going on? Thanks, Brian. One, journalism is a, is a profession and an industry. Yet people have continuously treated journalism as a by the way. And that has created part of the problem. Journalism and the media has a very big role in national development. It shapes the national agenda. It says, I mean, but, but we, we continuously think journalism is an extractive industry where you, you start a radio or TV station, you get some little money, go and buy some house in Ronda or big vehicles, don't pay your staff and run away. That's not the industry we are talking about. As I mentioned to you, journalism is nearly a nine billion industry. Uh, you look at entertainment, look at advertising, it's a huge industry that creates employment. For example, at a very bare minimum, Kenya has nearly 200 radio stations, right. 135 TV stations, over 100 print publications, over 2,000 blogs. It's a huge, huge, huge market in terms of creating employment, in terms, you know. Uh, so, so once, but you start treating that industry as a by the way, then you miss it. How many people uh, are employed in the media? Right. You know, look at wealth creation that comes through media houses. Right. I, I, was I was telling you, look at Pricewaterhouse report uh, last year, how much money? It was nearly near 9 billion the industry created. Right. Now, media houses pay taxes right. in, in a very big way uh, through the various media houses are, are giving livelihood to musicians, artists, journalists, advertisers, and the rest, designers, and the rest. Right. But, but we continuously look at an industry as people who just come here to record and, and play, you right. know, and, and we miss the whole point. Right. Unlike before, journalism is now a profession. Right. We now have PhDs in our newsrooms, people right. at a PhD level in the newsroom. Right. including KBC, you know. So right. if, if you are looking at that level of, of, of expertise in an industry, but you want to treat them as 1972, when journalists were putting on a T-shirt and a jeans tattered and just moving all over, then you miss the whole point. Right. How much does it take you to train somebody to that level? Right. The level of experience in KBC alone, for example, in staff training, is how much? But right. you want to treat such an industry as, as just, and you want to make people pay, work without pay, uh, you, want, you don't want to pay them overtime, you don't want, you know, uh, people work in horrible conditions, then right. you are missing the whole point. Because in any industry or, or factory, the biggest asset is the human resource. Right. So once you mistreat the human resource, the journalists, right. then these things we talk about, content is the king, we'll have good programs. Who will do the program? The robots? 
is right. the people. So people must be treated well and appreciated for them to right. do those good programs. Right, exactly. and, and that's why we are saying the 2023 media must, people must relook at how we have treated media. And, and where we, the issue of human rights in right. the media becomes very critical. You must respect the labor rights right. of the journalists and other employees in that industry right. who then become motivated and they give more. Right. Because journalism is a creative art. Right. You don't read everything in textbooks like maths, which has fixed formulas. Yeah. In journalism, is creative. It's more practical. Uh, and, practi and creative. Yeah. Now, uh, a person, Brian, who has not been paid for six months, how will he be creative? The guy is struggling to pay rent. and how, When will he be creative? Mm -hmm. so, so we must look at how do we uh, motivate uh, the bigger asset we have in journalism, who are the journalists, right. before we even talk about equipment. Right. So, so that's why we're talking about we must relook the 2023, we must relook. And, and, and unlike the, 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 the caviar manner in which people have looked at, at people, right. we have said, um, among other things, obviously, the, the recalling of the 2,400 cards, just one of the, the yeah. many things. Uh, why, we the are sudden, doing. why the sudden recalling? Uh, one, we notice uh, the industry feels accreditation the problem. The, there's a big problem, one of quacks. People who mi misrepresent themselves as journalists or media production and extort from people dangerously in the hotels, in events, and others. Uh, while us at the Media Council, we know the problem is not accreditation, but the industry still feels the accreditation is a problem. But, but I tell you that the accreditation is not a problem. Right. Uh, it's purely one, a gullible public, uh, uh, people who are also disparate to be covered by the media, so that even when they are lied to, you, you carry a microphone or a recorder which is, has no even battery, it's not working, but you put it in front of a guy, he's just uh, talking, and he will pay you money thinking you'll, you'll get the story covered. They don't right. even ask whether you work as a journalist, whether that, that recorder is working. You know, there, okay. there are so many disparate people there okay. who then become so easily conned. You right. know? So that's why we're introducing easy feature for if somebody told you he's a journalist, you can quickly, using your phone, confirm. So we have introduced a barcode. Yeah. So if somebody comes to you and says he's a journalist, right. just ask right. your media council card. It has a, bar, it has a, a QR yours? code here. This is mine, yes. I'm okay. journalist 001 in Kenya. Yeah, of your information. <laughs> Not that I'm the best journalist, but I work at the council, so I got right. it fast. So. And I'm among <laughs> the bosses as well. <laughs> so of once somebody gives yeah. you this card, right. just go to your Google uh, and, and, and text scan right. this. It will it has a QR show. code. Yes, it's a QR code. Yeah. Okay. So it will show where you work, if you are right. a journalist or if you are a quack. So that's just one but of the But do you things. feel like that might endanger even the journalist? For example, is an, a stranger or somebody who has their own interest, they're scanning your details, they'll have them and use it against you. On a, from a very safety po point of view, you even, Brian, if you go to an event, do you just give your ID to anybody who asks for of it? Of course not. I mean, not. So right. again, that also becomes to your sensitivities. That as right. a journalist, you cannot just give your card to any Tom, Hart and Dick in the streets. It right. must be an event. It must be somebody telling you, this is the governor's team, or this is the event by the CS, and their team is asking for, for your card. So you don't right. just go on throwing your card to everybody. Right. So we also want a situation where journalists are responsible. They right. can also ascertain. Because I've seen some of the invites, obviously these are lies. Uh, and, 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 and sorry that, uh, but you, you, you are, I mean, you went through, through your dad when you lost your dad, that somebody just picked somebody and go. So as you throw your card to everybody, how, do you, how safe are you? So journalism must also be safe in the sense that, uh, who am, which are functions? Somebody that don't just tell you we have an event in blue and you run there. You know, you must also do, because there are a lot of on your WhatsApps, everybody saying there's an effort event, there's an right. event. Some of those events have no even contact person. Right. They even just look suspicious from the word go. Right. So we are also throwing, and that's the discussion I had with you before also we came here. Also fake news, you know. People yeah, that, propelling that, fake news. Yes, that, that's and another public answer interest. It. Are we covering right. events of public interest? Or are we, when you just hear the so and so a politician having an event, you run there because of the money. The blue right. envelope, not because of the story. So, right. so we are also throwing it back to you as a journalist that once you get an invite to an event, right. you also assess the public value in that story we are going to cover. So right. that it's not just all over everybody, people running all over uh, right. saying that. And that's how we have lost credibility uh, because of the, the, the fake. One, we start with the pseudo journalists or the, the people who masquerade, right. who are purely posed as journalists and con from people. Right. Then we go to the fake information we are saying, mis misinformation and propaganda. Right. And that's how trust in journalism is going though. You know? right. And, and mm -hmm. for us to restore that public trust, we right. must one, identify and work with genuine journalists. Right. So media council and others must have a very serious public outreach program right. to help people understand who is a journalist. Right. 
Okay. Not everybody who works with a microphone or a, or a recorder is a journalist. Okay. Many of those people are quacks and, okay. and, and are just criminals who are making money. Right. So that's one of the programs mm -hmm. of restoring the card. We have started a public outreach, which we'll even use KBC here, okay. to help people understand how do you identify a genuine journalist. We have already reached out to the hotels. This uh, QR code will be introduced there. And once you go, any hotel will not admit anybody just for the mere fact that you have mentioned you are a journalist. From we have reached area. out to okay. uh, PRSK, the Association of Event Organizers in Kenya. You are already working with DCI and police. So it's going to be very rough. Mm -hmm. And if you are a journalist, don't worry. Okay. If you are a journalist, if you are a genuine journalist, there's no worry. But if you are a quack or have been posing, it's going to be difficult.